This video is part two of a review and update on macular degeneration, covering new developments as of 2013. In part one, we re reviewed the basics of macular degeneration, how the aging retina develops macular degeneration, we discussed the difference between the dry kind and the wet kind, and we reviewed the different ways of treating both kinds. In this video, we will look at what is currently going on with AMD. Specifically, first, in AREDS 2, they made changes to the original AREDS formula, like adding lutein and zeaxanthine and omega-3 essential fatty acids. Did that make a difference? Second, several new studies look at how much effect genes have on developing macular degeneration. And third, a major review of AMD risk factors. Besides genes, are there other things like smoking and overweight that might be important? We will cover all of those questions in this video. AREDS-1 was based on using antioxidant vitamins, A, C, E, and the mineral zinc, to try and reduce oxidative damage to the retina. The results, shown on this graph and discussed in the first video, show that the supplement combination did not reverse or even stop progression but it did slow it down. Because of the success of AREDS-1, AREDS-2 was organized to answer several additional questions. The primary part of the study involved adding certain nutrients to the original AREDS formula because there was evidence they may further slow the progress of AMD. First, lutein and zeaxanthine are carotenoid pigments related to vitamin A that are known to be important in retinal function. Second, other studies suggested that adding omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA, could also be helpful. Third, they added everything together, the entire recipe. The control group for this study used the basic original AREDS formula. There was also a secondary grouping to look at a couple of additional questions. First, because smokers who took vitamin A had increased risk of lung cancer, they used lutein and zeaxanthine as a substitute for vitamin A. Second, there was concern the dose of zinc was higher than necessary, so they tried a lower dose. Third was a combination of the above two items. So they have gone after some interesting questions in AREDS 2. The results of AREDS 2 were published this May 2013. Overall, they included about 2,000 eyeballs a people who started out at risk for MD and followed them for an average period of five years. This graph summarizes results of the first part. The scale on the left shows the percentage of people who developed advanced AMD with significant vision loss, either dry or wet. The scale along the bottom is time in years. The solid line, colored in blue, shows the rate of vision loss for people who were the controls taking the basic AREDS formula. Overall, about 30% of people progressed to advanced vision loss over five years. Usually, I would present a graph like this by giving a different color to each of the separate lines. But here, they are all so close together, there is not a significant difference between them. In other words, the changes in AREDS too adding lutein plus zeaxanthine, or omega-3 fatty acids, or their combination, in general did not improve the results over the original AREDS formula. Here is the abstract summary if you want to pause and read the details. Regarding the secondary questions, smokers, including former smokers, should not take vitamin A because of the increased risk of lung cancer. It looks like lutein and zeaxanthine can be substituted for vitamin A, getting the beneficial effect but not the lung cancer risk. Reducing the zinc dose did not affect progress. Next, we will talk about the association of macular degeneration with specific genes. Just a few years ago, when I did a video update, there were two principal genes listed here, CFH and LOC. The latter has been re renamed Age-Related Maculopathy Susceptibility 2, or ARMS 2. That was simple enough, but now in 2013 the list of associated genes has gotten a little longer. 
The advantage of all this is that once scientists can identify which genes are associated with macular degeneration and figure out what they do, they can use that information to develop new treatments. To give you an example, I will start with the gene that is probably best understood, complement factor H. In the list of causes of AMD, I mention inflammation as one of the causes of damage, which is partly me mediated through the complement system. CFH is an important controller of part of the process of inflammation. If it is not functioning properly, it allows inflammation to go unchecked and thus causes damage to normal cells in the retina. How does that work? In brief, the role of the complement system is to kill off invading or unwanted cells. An undesirable cell is identified by an antibody as a target for attack. The antibody triggers the complement cascade, which activates the membrane attack complex. The MAC is essentially a guided missile which bores a hole in the membrane of the target cell and causes its destruction. CFH keeps part of this process under control, so the complement system does not mistakenly act as a killer of normal cells. However, if CFH is not working properly, then the complement system proceeds unchecked. It attacks normal cells, causing unwanted damage. So if having a defective version of the CFH gene causes a risk, what can be done about that? Currently, researchers are working on controlling this process at different locations, indicated by the numbered arrows. I list CFH as just one example. Just as there are many genes in this process, so there are multiple directions for researchers to go. So just how bad is it to have one of these risk genes? Several studies came out this year which help put this in perspective. First, one more bit of background on our friend CFH. There is more than one defective version of the CFH gene because there are mutations in different places or single nucleotide polymorphisms if you want to be particular. We will concentrate on just one of those. You may remember from biology that you have two sets of chromosomes, so you have two copies of each gene, one on each chromosome. Different versions of the same gene are called alleles. For this version of CFH, a person could have both normal CFH alleles, labeled TT, one normal and one abnormal allele, CT, or two abnormal alleles, CC. The C's and T's represent single nucleotides at a particular location. With that as background, we are now prepared to understand this slide showing how much risk is involved depending on which alleles of this gene you happen to have. The data is from a large ongoing population study in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. The three boxes show how macular degeneration progresses in this case in women, depending on which combination of CFH alleles they have, TT, CT, and CC. We can learn a lot by looking at the first box. This includes women who have both normal alleles, the TT version, conferring the lowest risk. Darker shading represents increased levels of severity. The different lines show the increase in macular degeneration over time, projected out past age 95. For the lowest risk group relative to CFH, this is how macular degeneration develops over time. At age 45, no macular degeneration. By age 65, just over 10% have AMD of stage 2 or higher. By age 75, that increases to about 25%. If you happen to live longer than that, by 85, 40% have AMD of stage 2 or higher. Now, looking at the three boxes, you can see there are differences in what percentage of people develop AMD and how severe it is. To be more specific, I am just showing the highest and lowest risk versions for comparison. For the lower risk TT group, at age 65, the risk of level 2 or higher is about 12% compared to the higher risk version, which at 65 has a risk of nearly 25%, almost double. At age 85, it is about 40% versus 60%.
the results are essentially the same for men. That is the difference for a single gene, CFH, as one risk factor. We will have more to say about that toward the end of the next section on risk factors. Next, let's take a look at a broader range of risk factors. You can divide these into two groups. The first group is about demographics like age and weight. The second group shows the risk for multiple risk genes. Let's start with the obvious one, age, to see how this works. The statistic they are using is the hazard ratio, abbreviated HR. I'm going to describe this rather loosely as the following. A hazard ratio of 2 means you have twice the hazard of developing a particular problem compared to the reference person, who acts as a standard. He or she has a hazard ratio of 1. Each category in question starts with a reference level and then the hazard ratio for different characteristics. That macular degeneration risk increases with age is pretty obvious. There appears to be no difference between the sexes, regarding AMD anyway. Education level greater than high school may make a small difference. Smoking behavior clearly has an effect, which we have known from previous studies. But would you have guessed this one? BMI stands for body mass index, a measure of overweight. So it looks like if you carry extra weight, that may involve extra risk here. Now here are risk levels related to a broader range of risk genes and combinations of alleles. I'm just going to mention a couple of these. This is the same CFH we looked at a minute ago and these are the risk levels associated with a number of abnormal alleles present. Here is another risk associated gene we mentioned earlier, the ARMS2. Note that the increase in risk with two high risk alleles is higher in this study than with CFH. And remember the other form of CFH we talked about? Here is its risk profile. In this study, higher than the first CFH risk gene. I want to close this section by making one more point. We have looked at various risk factors, both demographic and genetic. Another way to look at this is to recognize the most important predictive factors of AMD progress are the age at onset and level of AMD at the time of diagnosis. I will be brief at describing this slide. There are three elements here. AMD is divided into just two categories, early and late. On the left is age of onset, 45 or 65. Along the bottom is genetic risk, this time the combination of CFH and ARMS2 grouped into three risk levels. Using age 65 as a reference point, you can see the difference in rates of mild and advanced AMD depending on age and severity at onset. You could pause here if you want to digest this diagram in more detail. So, we started by talking about AREDS2, which confirmed that antioxidant vitamins indeed help slow the progress of AMD. However, adding lutein plus zeaxanthine or omega-3 fatty acids or their combination in general did not improve the results over the original AREDS formula. We have seen some demographic risk factors. Age is expected and smoking behavior is pretty well known. Overweight may also play a role. Lastly, we have looked at genes associated with AMD. Identifying these genes gives researchers new avenues for developing treatments, particularly for the dry kind. To get an idea of how much effort is being put into macular degeneration research, if you go to clinicaltrials.gov, you will see there are currently 948 trials listed. There is a lot of effort being put in developing treatments for macular degeneration. Hopefully, it won't be too long before there is more to report. Here are selected references if you want to read further.